I don't have a good image toward parents. When I was in the eighth grade, my father had an affair and eloped. My mother, who was a housewife, took me and my younger sister Anne, who was still in the second grade, and went back to her parents' house. My mother started working part time, but a few months later, she and her boyfriend disappeared, leaving me and my sister alone with our grandparents. Is mom not coming home yet? Yeah, I think so. We're your parents from now on. You are our precious grandchildren. From now on, the four of us will live happily together. Yeah. My grandparents were kind and took good care of Anne and I. However, when I was a senior in high school, my grandparents died. Before we knew what happened to our grandparents' inheritance, it was divided among their siblings, and Anne and I were sent to an institution without receiving a single penny. I worked hard at studying under my grandparents and earned money for school fees with part time jobs, but I gave up on going to university. I couldn't count on my so called parents. I'll be independent and take care of my younger sister. I decided to do so, and after graduating from high school, I got a job and left the institution to live with Anne. I don't have a good image of parents, and rather, a bad image of them being very selfish. I couldn't imagine myself getting married, having a family, and becoming a parent. That's what I thought, but one day, I met my husband Pete through an introduction from my boss at work. As we got to know each other better, we began to talk about our families, and I realized that Pete was in a similar situation as me. I heard that Pete's father also chose his mistress and left Pete's mother from the affair. I totally understand. I'm mad at my dad too for being a complete jerk. Yeah, I was angry, but I was sad. My sister and I cried from time to time. I still had my mom, but it must have been really hard to have both of your parents leaving you and your sister like that. Yeah. A husband who sympathizes with my struggles. With a husband like this, I might be able to have a proper family. And so, Pete and I began dating with marriage in mind. A few months after we started dating, Anne, who was attending a vocational school, decided to get a job and announced that she would be going out on her own. Hey, sis, I finally got a job! Really? That's great! Congratulations! So, I'm going to be on my own from now on. What? Thank you so much for everything that you've done for me! So don't worry about me anymore. From now on, I want you to live for yourself. I want you to marry someone you love and be happy. Oh, thank you too. Anne's words made me all teary. I am so happy that she grew up to be kind and strong. For Anne's sake, I will get married and create a happy family. And one year later, I married Pete. I want to spend my married life in a relaxing way with just Pete and I. I wish to have this kind of feeling before marriage. Pete, on the other hand, seemed to want children early on, even before we were married. I do want children. I want to raise my kids properly so they won't be sad. Yeah, me too. I was still hesitant about becoming a parent myself, but I know that we can create a family so I can do my best to make sure my children won't feel the same way I did and create a happy family. With Pete, I feel like I could do that. As I talked with Pete about this subject before we got married, I gradually became more and more positive about having a child. However, Welcome home. It seems like you've been busy at work. Yeah, I'm tired today too, so I'm gonna go sleep. I see. 
Ever since we got married, my husband would say he was tired from work and quickly go to bed every night. Although we are newlyweds, we haven't been intimate since we got married. He said he wanted to have children, but what's going on? Doesn't he want to have a baby? It's been a year since we got married, and the situation hasn't changed since then. Now, my mother in law, Lisa, has been urging me to have children. I really want to see my grandchild soon. Is that possible? Oh, we still want to enjoy our life together, and we're both busy at work at the moment. If Kim quits her job, you both could have better timing than now, right? Huh? It's one of the wife's role to show her mother-in-law their grandchild's face, isn't it? Well, I can't really just quit work. And there are various procedures for quitting, like finding a suitable successor, so I can't quit so soon. I see. Well then, I wonder when I'll be able to see my grandchild's face. My husband is the one who goes to sleep right away because he's tired, so putting that kind of pressure to only me is really unfair. Pete doesn't even try to support, or at least try to cover me when Lisa pressures me with this topic. If he doesn't want children anymore with me, why doesn't he just say it? What is he thinking about? On the way home from Lisa's house, I was so frustrated that I finally confronted Pete about it. Lisa thought that because of my work, we couldn't have children, and she blamed me for it. And yet, you didn't even try to support me. What's happening here? <gasps> oh. I mean, you always say that you're tired in the first place, and you don't even seem to want to have kids at all. But didn't you want to have kids? That's. What are you trying to do? Actually, I'm infertile. What? I said I wanted to have a child, but I couldn't consult to you about the fact that I'm infertile. I'm really sorry. I had no idea that my husband was infertile. When I looked at him and saw his sad face, I felt my heart tighten. It was hard for Pete, too, and he was going through it. Don't apologize. I'm sorry, too. You should have told me. I know you want to have children too. I'm completely fine as long as you and I can live together. Thank you. With this, Pete and I made up. It doesn't matter if we don't have children. I only hope for us to live together happily. A few months later, Anne had told me that she had decided to get married. That's great! Congratulations! Thank you very much! Anyway, I'll bring you something to celebrate. Her boyfriend was a classmate of hers from vocational school, and they supported each other since then, which developed into a relationship. I decided to visit the house where Anne and her boyfriend lived after work, bringing a gift to congratulate them. On the day when I was about to head to my sister's after work, oh, I forgot the ring. I realized that I had forgotten my grandmother's ring. I had intended to give my grandmother's ring to Anne with a gift. My grandmother's ring was entrusted to me by my grandfather, who told me to sell it when my grandmother passed away if I had trouble making ends meet. However, since this was the only memoir of my grandmother, I never sold it and kept it with great care. Now, I want to entrust it to Anne, who is getting married. Why did I even forget something so important? So, I went back home once to get the ring. The ring was tucked away on a shelf in the bedroom, so I rushed to the room. And lo and behold, is it okay with your wife and all? 
she's coming home late today, so it's fine. In the bedroom, I saw Pete and a woman getting intimate. Ah! Uh. Ah! I can't believe what I'm seeing right before my eyes. I thought Pete wasn't interested in getting intimate because even if he was infertile, it would be only natural for him to be intimate and have desires, but he didn't even have that. But instead, he was being intimate with another woman. And he brought her home while I was gone. I had no idea he was such a prick. At first, I was surprised. But as I realized what was going on, I gradually got calm. I could no longer look at Pete with anything but contempt as I turned my gaze towards him, and he was the worst of the worst. I packed my suitcase and photographed the scene of the two being naked with my cell phone as they remained frozen. Oh, oh, hey. Are you being for real? Both of them started to wince, but I couldn't care less. We'll divorce. Alimony will be paid by you and her, so be prepared. Wait a minute, I'm not sure I'm ready for a divorce. I swallowed a lot of thoughts for you over the past few years and tried to be a good wife to you, but you betrayed me from the very beginning. You have been ignoring me and haven't been intimate with me since we got married. <sighs> Pete couldn't say anything back as I said so and glared at him. I held on tightly to my grandmother's ring and left the house. We then decided to set up a meeting to discuss the divorce. Pete didn't want a divorce and he apologized repeatedly, but who the hell does he think he is? I am so sorry. Please forgive me. Please reconsider about the divorce. Now I know about your affair, just confess everything honestly. So, Pete told me everything, including who the woman was and how long he had been friends with her. Then, he gave me the most shocking news. I actually have a child with her. What? So, it was a complete lie that Pete was infertile. I can't believe he has a child with his mistress. Pete worked overtime every day, came home tired, seemed to have no hobbies, and couldn't afford to save enough money. I had my doubts, but I never interfered thinking that Pete, who couldn't confess his infertility, might be making some effort in his own way. But that money was spent to that woman and their child. Pete seemed to be under the mistaken impression that if he confessed to everything, he would be forgiven. I'm so sorry. Please reconsider the divorce. We will divorce. Huh? I just confessed everything. You betrayed my trust with a horrible lie about being infertile, and you even had a child behind my back. You're horrible, Pete. He just confirmed to me that he is an irredeemable prick, a scumbag, and a lousy man. How could he think that this would make people forgive him? I rented an apartment, moved out, filed for divorce settlement, and Pete seems to have realized that I'm not going to forgive him. Even if I divorce, I need the money to raise a family. So please, don't request for an alimony. He was so selfish to use his child and the woman as a shield to save him. How dare he has the nerve to do that to me? Since the divorce settlement was going nowhere, I was prepared to sue him. How could you do such a thing? How dare you cheat and betray your own wife? Th that's... How dare you walk down the same path as your father who cheated on me and chose his mistress? How could my son turn out to be such a horrible, horrible person? I can't believe that my life has come to this. Uh. 
When Lisa found out about the affair, she broke down in tears as if it was the end of the world and she blamed her son for it. Furthermore, What is the meaning of this? You have a wife. Weren't you married to my daughter? What do you mean, affair? Oh, um... You even have a child with my daughter. How dare you? You better take responsibility. Urgh. He even got lectured from the woman's parents, who thought he was marrying their daughter. In the end, P finally agreed to the divorce. P and his mistress ended up paying thousands in alimony. My boss, who introduced Pete to me, was furious when he found out about this. Pete lost his position within the company and was getting fired. Uh, I can't believe I'm getting fired. Can you please rethink about him getting fired? I believe that he should be able to pay his alimony with no delay while properly raising his child with the income he worked for. My boss and Pete's boss agreed with my opinion, and Pete managed to avoid being fired. Instead, he has to continue to work desperately while getting cold shoulder from his colleagues, especially from his female colleagues. I know it would be a bed of nails for him, but it's his own fault. He really was a scumbag. But sis, I'm glad that you're doing better than I thought you would. Well, I do feel much better after the divorce. And I feel better when I get to see you. I'm glad. Please come visit me anytime. Thank you. As for my sister, she is happily married to her faithful partner. That is the only thing that keeps me going. I hope she is happy and doesn't have to go through the same thing as I did. I have had enough of marriage. If my sister has a child, I would like to take care and give my love to that child. Please subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed this video. Have a wonderful day!